In this video, we are going to see how the hyperconjugating effect of an alkyl group changes if I replace these hydrogen atoms with other heavier isotopes of hydrogen like deuterium and tritium. Isotopes, if you remember, are basically different atoms of the same element, right? Hydrogen has three isotopes, hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2 and hydrogen 3. All of these have the same number of protons, all of these have the same atomic number. And as you know, atomic number gives the chemical signature of a particular atom. So because all three of these atoms have the same atomic number, all of these are essentially hydrogen atoms. However, if you look at their mass numbers, which is nothing but the number of protons plus number of neutrons, their mass numbers are different, right? Hydrogen only has one proton and no neutrons, so it has a mass number of 1, while this one, H2, has one proton as well as one extra neutron, giving it a mass number of 2, while H3 has one proton and two neutrons, giving it a mass number of 3. So these two isotopes, they have extra neutrons in the nucleus and these two are definitely going to be heavier compared to the hydrogen atom, right? So H3, which we commonly call tritium, as it has a mass number of 3 and we represent it by the symbol T. Because tritium has the highest mass number, it's going to be the heaviest, followed by H2, which we call deuterium and represented by the symbol D, followed by the hydrogen atom, right? Hydrogen, in fact, is going to be the lightest of all of its isotopes. Now it turns out that these small differences in mass of these isotopes also affects their ability to show hyperconjugation to a surrounding cation or an alkene. So how does that happen? To understand, let's take a carbon-hydrogen bond. So let's say we have a carbon-hydrogen bond out here. Now we generally represent a bond by a straight line, but in reality the atoms in any particular molecule are not static but these atoms keep vibrating. So a chemical bond is more like a spring. So you can think of this bond as vibrating like a spring, right? Now in a carbon-tritium bond, because tritium is heavier than hydrogen, so it turns out that it doesn't vibrate as much as a carbon-hydrogen bond. So therefore, on an average, a carbon-hydrogen bond is longer compared to a carbon-tritium bond. Now because on an average these bonds are longer, this means that the electrons in this bond are further away from the nucleus of both of these carbon and hydrogen atoms. So therefore there will be a weaker electrostatic attraction out here between these electrons and the nucleus of each of these atoms compared to the electrons in a carbon-tritium bond. The electrons out here are much closer to the nucleus of both carbon and tritium. So there is going to be a stronger electrostatic attraction between these. So therefore, because the electrostatic interactions are much weaker in the longer carbon-hydrogen bond, so it's easier to break a carbon-hydrogen bond compared to a carbon-tritium bond. In fact, if you look at the bond dissociation energy data, if you look up these values on the internet, You'll find out that a carbon-hydrogen bond has a lower bond dissociation energy compared to a carbon-deuterium bond. It's easier to break carbon-hydrogen bonds followed by carbon-deuterium and the most difficult to break would be the carbon-tritium bond. Now coming back to hyperconjugation, because hyperconjugation involves breaking of these bonds, these carbon-hydrogen, carbon-deuterium and carbon-tritium sigma bonds, it's a form of sigma pi resonance. So therefore, because it's easiest to break these carbon-hydrogen bonds, followed by carbon-deuterium and carbon-tritium, so therefore, the hyperconjugating effect of a carbon-hydrogen bond will be greater as it's easier to break compared to carbon deuterium and carbon tritium, right? 
so if you look at the stability of these three cations let's call this a b and c in all of this the cation can be stabilized via hyperconjugation right however this sigma pi resonance will be much easier in a as it's much easier to break these carbon hydrogen bonds compared to carbon deuterium and carbon tritium so the stability imparted by the ch3 group will be the highest followed by cd3 and ct3 right so therefore stability wise a is going to be more stable than b followed by c right now a quick note out here from the point of view of hyperconjugation a ch3 group shows a greater plus h compared to cd3 and ct3 now these alkyl groups they can also show inductive effects right because carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen it can pull some of the electrons in this bond it can pull some of the electron cloud towards itself thereby making it partially negative right now if you compare ch3 and ct3 even out here this carbon is more electronegative than the tritium atom so even this can become partially negative however because the carbon tritium bond is shorter the electrons in this bond can be much more influenced by the nucleus of the carbon atom compared to electrons in a carbon hydrogen bond because this bond is longer the electrons are farther away so the electron pull by the carbon atom is lower so therefore the amount of charge that gets developed on the carbon atom of a ct3 group will be higher compared to that of ch3 so a ct3 group will have a greater charge density on the carbon atom so it will push the electrons in surrounding sigma bonds much more compared to a ch3 group right so from the point of view of induction the trend is exactly the opposite ct3 is a stronger plus i group followed by cd3 and ch3 so once again if you look at the stability of these three cations on the basis of hyperconjugation the stability of a is going to be greater than that of b which will be greater than that of c as a chc group shows the highest plus h effect but if we consider the stability purely on the basis of induction so if we think about the stability purely based on the plus i effect then because ct3 has the highest electron density it will push the electrons in this sigma bond more towards this cation compared to cd3 and ch3 so therefore purely on the basis of induction c should be more stable than b which should be more stable than a right so as you can see hyperconjugation and induction are working exactly in the opposite direction out here but remember because hyperconjugation involves actual delocalization of these sigma electrons which will lead to an actual delocalization of this positive charge which is not the case in case of induction so therefore these hyperconjugating effects are much stronger compared to induction and therefore the correct order of stability would be a greater than b greater than c now that you know how replacing hydrogen with its isotopes changes its hyperconjugative and inductive strengths can you figure out the stability order of these given cations pause the video and take as much time as you want and try and figure out what the correct stability order might be for these cations okay now that you're done let's see how each of these groups affect the carbocation stability now a cd3 group is an electron donating group right it can donate electrons to the benzene ring via hyperconjugation let's also not forget that this cd3 group is also an inductive group it can also push electrons into the benzene ring via induction right so this is a plus h as well as a plus i group right in fact all of these are plus h and plus i groups all of these are plus h and plus i right however as we have seen in our previous videos whenever we have an electron donating group attached to a benzene ring 
it only brings about negative charges at these positions right it brings about negative charges at ortho and para of the electron donating group so even out here the negative charges will get developed out here right if you are not sure exactly how this is happening feel free to check out the previous video in which we talk about in detail about how these charges occur now as you can see in both a and c these negative charges will get developed right under the cation so if you draw the hyperconjugating structures in case of cd3 if you keep pushing these electrons if you keep doing that you will see that in one of the resonating structures we will have a lone pair right next to the empty orbital of this cation so both of these can overlap and stabilize the cation right so the CD3 group out here can stabilize this cation. Similarly, if we come to C, if you draw the hyperconjugating structures out here, you will see that even out here, this CT3 group can go and stabilize the cation. However, if you come to B, when we have a CH3 group attached at the meta position, if you draw the hyperconjugating structures out here, if you keep moving these electrons, if you keep doing that, you will see that in none of the resonating structures does this negative charge come right under this carbon atom. So therefore, in both B and D, because the electron donating groups are at meta, so therefore they won't be able to stabilize the cation via hyperconjugation, right? So in B and D, because hyperconjugation is not leading to extra stability, so hyperconjugating effects are going to be not that important, right? Now that we have established how the attached groups are affecting the cation, let's try and figure out the stability order. So A and C are clearly going to be more stable compared to B and D as they can stabilize the cation via hyperconjugation. And between A and C, because CD bonds are weaker and easier to break compared to CT bonds. So there will be a greater hyperconjugating effect in case of CD3 compared to CT3. So A is definitely going to be more stable compared to C, right? Now between B and D, hyperconjugation doesn't play a role. So the more important effect out here will be the induction. And because CT3 shows a greater inductive effect compared to CH3, so therefore between B and D, D is going to be more stable compared to B.